Listen, I don't need to tell you that Call of Duty has not been in a good spot for a decent while. I love the franchise, don't get me wrong. It has a very important place in my heart and memories. But COD is a game that has just hasn't aged well compared to other modern games and IPs. But Black Ops 6 just barged in and... Wait, how long has the video been now? Really? Okay, cool. But Black Ops 6 just slammed the massive, veiny, juicy cock on the table and kept Last Stand Puck to breathe some life into the game. Frankly speaking, I wasn't very excited for this year's Call of Duty. I didn't get Modern Warfare 2023, which was the first time I haven't gotten the newest Call of Duty since Modern Warfare 2. And hell, for the past couple of years, I would play for a few months, then angrily drop the game as Sergio's iteration no longer becomes fun to play, watching my precious time and money being stolen. The only reason why I am, and even able to make this video, and plan on making a full review of Black Ops 6 upon launch, is because I get to play the game because of Game Pass, so I wouldn't necessarily lose any money because of it. That was until I heard good news after good news about the game. One positive change after another that instilled goodwill and hope for me. Yeah, I still had memories of the consecutive past years of mediocre Call of Duties. Oh God. So going into the beta, I was as neutral as I possibly could. If you've seen my Splitgate 2 video, you know how this is going to go. But if you haven't, this isn't going to be a full on review video. After all, the full game isn't even out yet. But more so, an analysis video going over pros and cons while giving as much feedback as possible. So. Book right in. Let's start off with the good. For the most part, this is your average Call of Duty game. If you expect this game to be revolutionary, at least multiplayer wise, I think you have your expectations way too high. However, this year's iteration of Call of Duty does stand out from all the other past ones due to one thing Omni movement. You can sprint in all directions, auto leaning, dolphin diving multi-directional turning, and what I find personally to have the most impact, sliding. Oh, that was nice. To help explain Omni movement and its impact on COD, I'm going to reference another game. Valorant. You what? Calm down, yes. I know Call of Duty players are allergic to Valorant. Just calm the fuck down, everybody. Calm down. Yes, I know Valorant is a tax shooter, but just let me cook, damn it. In Valorant, there is a specific agent you can play, that is, Neon. Neon has unique movement in the game, and as a matter of fact, she is pretty strong as of recording, due to semi-recent buffs. What she can do, what other Valorant characters can't do, is full-on sprinting at the enemy, and has multiple charges of slides that she can do while shooting. From my time in playing this beta, even across game genres and playstyles, I think Neon and Army movement play fairly similar roles. When playing with Neon, you're not going to mindlessly run slide around because it will get you killed. Rather, you play Neon to make yourself as hard to hit as possible, and in this case, which is more applicable to Call of Duty, to rapidly take advantageous space or angles. Army movement allows you to do the same thing, it's just that Call of Duty is restrictive, being that you can move and shoot, and moving in general, and everyone has access to army movement instead of it just being one character in Valorant. The only thing worth noting here is that there's a huge advantage and incentive for sliding and shooting as well. But from my personal experience in this beta, using a dolphin dive, not so much. I know this is going to trigger a lot of people, especially after that bound comparison, but shit, I won't be surprised if I find myself on a hit list in the near future, but hell, I'm going to say it anyways. I think Omni movement is just a better version of Exo movement. Yes, these are completely different systems, but I feel like exosuits are the extreme edge of rapid and fast movement. Your base Call of Duty is the default, and army movement is the nice in between. It is fast paced, yes, but you're not moving across a map with a jetpack, but it's also similar to regular formula of classic Call of Duty gameplay, but having its own unique identity compared to its other Call of Duty versions and predecessors. It leaves room for mastery, but still casual friendly. 
It's easy to use, but those who know how to use it to its best of abilities will probably win most of their gunfights. Just keep the excessive shit in the ranked competitive playlist, okay? Just keep it out of the casual mode, please. Another thing that I liked about this beta was the credit class system they implemented. The specialist abilities are a new feature that I like that helped solidify roles and play styles, but they also still do invalidate mixing and matching perks if you want to. And the fact that most attachments do not downgrade your weapons help simplify weapon building and I think it will actually make weapon balance easier. Let's say a gun is too strong because it shoots like a laser. Just nerf the recoil control and there you go. Or you could probably just nerf the damage instead. But those are probably fine routes to go since you no longer have to consider all the attachments available when deciding on weapon balance. At least so far, all the additions have been fairly casual friendly while aiming to make things more fun. For example, in one of the maps there's a secret underground passageway you can take to get to the other side of the map into the enemy spawn. Wait, this, this part of the map fucking exists? Excuse me? Brother! On the other hand, we get the funnest thing they have added. You can take the enemy hostage as body shields. Even better, you can talk to the enemies while they're being held hostage. This alone can make some hilarious moments. With that, I realized a mission I must accomplish. To fight against the greatest evil that's ever threatened the United States. No, no. Obesity, school shootings, the student loan crisis, rising inflation, climate change, the housing crisis. COMMUNISM! To do this, I had to get my hands dirty. Quickly, what's the US capital? Quick it, what's the US capital? What's the US capital? Answer the fucking question! What's the US capital? I'm not a communist, bro. I'm not a communist. No, call me here, motherfucker! Now, all these war crimes. Yeah. Am I violating the Geneva Convention? Probably, but rules are meant to be broken. Listen, man, I need to see your papers real quick. Hold on. Oh. Give me your papers. Give me your papers, quick. Well, I'm not gonna kill him. Yeah, five seconds. Get give me your fucking papers. Sorry. Give me your fucking papers right now. I said, give me your fucking papers. <laughs> I think qualified immunity got me covered, so hopefully, karma shouldn't be able to bite me in the ass. Nobody know, ain't no party like a Diddy party. No, no. <laughs> Alright, time to get into the cons. The first thing I want to bring up, and the most important thing that I have to bring up, is the performance. Whoa, what the fuck was that? What the fuck is going on? Huh? What the fuck is this? Thank God this was a beta, because not just me, but so many other people have noted the performance on this game is pretty damn bad. I love the Xbox app, which launches the Call of Duty app, which then loads up the Black Ops 6 beta. What the fuck? And don't get me started on the packet burst and lag and all the other bullshit and time to load. Literally, everyone else I've seen online have these issues. It's not a me issue, it's a little game issue. Even if I had the best supercomputer in the world, it's a it's the damn game's fault. And I mean, for fuck's sake, look how many times this shit crashed. Oh my game crashed. Okay. Cool. Very cool. Nice. So whenever I try to launch it now, I just get a fucking error code, right? Yep, okay, fuck me then. Okay. Guess I better restart my damn computer. We encourage you to check out the train. What am I looking to at? For the all new Omni Movement system, which allows you to move like a true Black Ops action hero. Throughout the beta, we'll be introducing new maps and modes to keep things fresh. Remember, this is a small portion of what we have in store for launch, <laughs> where you'll experience 16 brand new multiplayer maps in addition to a full arsenal of new Black Ops guns, gear, and gadgets. We're still hard at work crafting the full launch experience. 
We encourage you to reach the level cap each week of the beta to experience all of the exciting new features and mm -hmm. content. And the feedback you provide uh -huh. is yep, crucial yep, yep. in helping us make Black Ops 6 the best it can be. As a bonus, you will earn exclusive rewards that can be equipped yep. in the beta. Nice, n nice. I love seeing these rewards. I love seeing them. Negative 50. Wait. Negative 57? Negative. What happened to the fucking mash timer? Hello? Game? Mash beginning in negative time. Excuse me? What? Yeah, I'm gonna just back out if that's gonna be the case. Wait, what? Brother. Brother. Brother! Brother! Did my game fucking crash? Yep, it just... It didn't give me the error this time, it just fucking crashed. Yeah, that's a good way to end it, honestly. <laughs> that's enough of this session. My fucking packet bust! Are you serious? Listen, game, I need you to fix yourself real quick. What? My game fucking crash again? Ain't no way! I was gonna give him back shots! No! No! Why? Why? No! I was gonna give him back shots. The universe is against me, dog. The game really didn't want me to give someone back shots, I tell you what. This is the most important thing that they have to fix, because it doesn't matter if this is the best Call of Duty we've had in the last five years, but... The game is just so piss poor quality that it can't even run functionally or decently well. That is a shit game. I had this issue on Cold War on fucking Xbox. To where it would always fucking randomly crash to where I just gave up on it. I just gave up because I couldn't play. It always crashed. I couldn't do it. And if they don't solve this with Black Ops 6, it'd be the same thing. I would have to give up on it, because I literally wouldn't be able to play the game. So this is number one on the priority list, fix the damn performance. Number two on the priority list is that I would say that so far from the couple you have seen, at least in the core game, I, was, I didn't really touch Gunfight or the uh, Fight House, whatever the second mode is called. But so far, the map design has been terrible. For the five, I think, question mark, maps have been in the Black Ops 6 beta, only one of them were okay. All the map designs, except for that one okay map, have been absolutely, like, I, I don't know what they were thinking, honestly, with the map design. We have this movement system that encourages fast, aggressive play, that makes you feel like a hero in a movie, action hero. You know, that catchphrase I've been saying this entire hype season, trying to advertise the damn game. Let's put a satellite dish in the middle of a fucking desert to make a sniper's paradise to discourage people from fucking running across the map. Let's make this a slow map, even though we have a moving system and been encouraging action hero style gameplay. That makes total fucking sense. Let's also have a three lane map to where people just sit back, snipe, and stay in the spawns. Let's also have a shipment wannabe that is so poorly designed due to the fact that it has so many small corners, hideaways, Cubbies, it just doesn't flow well at all compared to a shipment map. If it was, if they just made that map bigger, like not small what it is right now, but small, medium size, or basically just medium in general, I think that map would be fine. But it's too small of a map to have that many tight corners, blunt objects that get in your way, walls, buildings, fucking weird archetypes, and areas to go around. It just doesn't make sense. Oh yeah, let's also have like a shopping district and it's in the shape of a U. 
And when going to converge in the middle of the map, it's just a sniper's long range paradise that discourages moving towards the objective. Let's also do that. Let's, uh, let's also discourage people moving towards the middle of the map by having it be a U shape so that people can get sniped across the fucking map. That, that, let's also do that. If anything, it's going to kill Black Ops 6, at least in the multiplayer, and it's going to be the map design. The concerning thing about this, which is why I'm bringing it up, is because I literally have zero memory. Actually, one. Let me clarify. I have one memory to where they went back and made a change in the map. And that one time they did was in the Black Ops 3 beta for some random map I can barely remember. That's the only time they went back and fixed something that was bad in the map. That one time. And since then, I cannot recall a single moment when Call of Duty has went back and fixed map design. Because they're too busy adding new features and getting ready to sell the next Call of Duty. So don't bother going back and fixing old poor decisions when they just sell you a new game in the next year. It doesn't... <laughs> you get my point. Again, my main point is that turbo map design can kill both army movement and thus this game. Oh yeah, quick editing post note here. Um, one thing that I forgot to mention was that the spawns in this game were pretty abysmal. There are so many cases where either enemies spawn right behind me or right in front of me or vice versa. It's either bad map design or literally just choosing the worst possible spawn locations or having a bad spawn choice algorithm. Something along those lines. But the spawns also need to be fixed. Because, like, what is this crap right here? What the hell is this? They all spawned right behind me? Um, excuse me? What the fuck is that spawn system? When they spawn all right behind me. Literally three of them. Okay, these are the last two points, which are just basically balance and quality life things I noticed. For one, the field upgrades are fairly weak. You have the ammo pack, a gas mine, trophy system is okay. And then there was the sleeper agent introduced in week two. And that was by far the best one because it literally turned into a Among Us lobby. Except everyone had a fucking gun. The true American Among Us. It was by far the best one because it allowed you to blend in with the enemy team. You don't talk to the enemy team to them on the just front facing. And guess what? You can get shot by what you thought was a teammate. Obviously, super duper strong. And I think the main issue is that I don't think is that the fact that the other ones are weak per se. Because ammo pack, cool. Gas mine, cool. Trophy system, Always gonna be good. But the, the main three I'm talking about here, and it's not that they're bad, it's just that they feel non impactful compared to going around as an enemy sleeper agent. I think they need to fine tune these field upgrades to where they either feel more impactful or they just should be stronger, honestly. And the last thing I want to bring up is player clarity. And this is gonna be super weird for me to say, but I think they should add player outline to both the friendly and enemy team. Now, this has never been in any past Call of Duty in my memory because we always had the name on top of the head that you could always see. So why add something new if it ain't broke, don't fix it? It's actually an issue unconsciously caused by Omni movement. And specifically when you're laying on the ground. When you're climbing across a map, that's one thing. But if you're laying on the ground and camping, which, let's be honest here, is always going to be a thing, it is sometimes hard to distinguish a dead and alive player. Look at this clip, for example. What the fuck are you? What is that? What is that? Because army movement allows you to lay in weird ways that people are just not used to, you can mistake a person being dead. Oh, that's for sneaky shit, yes, but it just, it's, you shouldn't be able to confuse a real person for a dead body. Now, I'm not saying making these outlines bright red, magenta, purple, make it super clear and obvious, but just enough to where if you look at a body on the floor, you should be able to tell if it is a living person or if it's just a ragdoll body. That's the reason I'm bringing this up. It's not because it's hard to tell when someone's running across a map or if someone's hiding somewhere. That is just play mechanics, but if you can't tell 
edit body from a living person, an active player, I think that's personally an issue to, of player clarity and that should be adjusted. And that's all I have to say about Black Ops 6 right now. That's everything I can say, honestly, because again, I don't have access to the campaign, the multiplayer, again, this is a beta and I don't have access to zombies. And I do plan on making a full thing for this. So if you want to see my full actual review of Black Ops 6, like, comment, subscribe, do all that good shit for me. If you like this type of content, check out my channel. I do a lot of variety of content. You can see some of my other similar videos or you can check out my other type of videos I do. This is a variety channel with no particular theme or topic, but hey, check it out. See if there's anything that catches your attention. Again, thank you so much for watching and until next time, I'm gonna go do something else.